Hello, I'm J.C. Chong of Clemson University in South Carolina. I'm a turf and ornamental entomologist, and I work with greenhouse and nursery growers in developing pest management programs, not just in South Carolina, but throughout the country. Today, we'll be talking about the European pepper moth. The European pepper moth is a serious pest in greenhouses and nurseries throughout the world. In this webinar, we will discuss how to manage this pest effectively. As its common name implies, the European pepper moth is an invasive pest originally from Europe. Its original habitat is the fresh and saltwater marshes of southern Europe and eastern Mediterranean. Since the 1980s, European countries have seen a steady spread of the European pepper moth. By 2000, this very hungry caterpillar has spread to almost all European countries. It was only a matter of time before the European pepper moth was spread to North America, which has a close horticultural trade with Western Europe, particularly the Netherlands. The first detection of the European pepper moth occurred in a nursery's uh, greenhouse, actually, in San Diego County, California, in 2004. This early uh, infestation was eradicated successfully. However, there were numerous interceptions of this pest on the border between 2005 and 2010. In 2005, the European pepper moth was detected in several uh, greenhouses in Ontario. This infestation was eradicated quickly, but numerous infestations were detected in the subsequent years. By 2008, the European pepper moth was considered established in Ontario and no longer considered a regulated pest. Additional infestation surfaced in California in 2010, and since then, the European pepper moth has spread too widely in the United States, from Washington State to California, and eastward to California, Florida, and northward to uh, Maine. In the Carolinas, greenhouse growers have experienced increased infestation and damage by the European pepper moth in the past five years. My colleagues and I, working throughout the country, have learned quite a bit about the biology and management of this invasive pest in the past 10 years. Management is not only about applying insecticide. Other cultural and biological control options are also available. This webinar will provide you with information that can help you design an effective management program against the European pepper moth. The first question I often receive from growers is, do I have to worry about the European pepper moth? The answer to that question depends on your answers to several other questions. Is your operation located in the Carolinas? If so, you do have to worry about the pest since we are experiencing an increase in infestation and damage in the past few years. Is your operation located in the west coast or the southeast? If so, you do have to worry about this pest because this part of the country is also experiencing issues with the European pepper moth. If you live in area outside of the known distribution of the European pepper moth, I would not let my guard down. That's because, first, most part of the continental U.S. is between the 30th and 45th latitude, which, is, which corresponds to the home range of the European pepper moth. In theory, the European pepper moth has the potential to establish itself in all parts of the continental U.S. Secondly, the horticultural trade is a national and a global one. Infestation in one part of the country or the world can be spread to the other side of the world through a shipment of infested plants. The European pepper moth has a relatively wide host range that includes more than 50 different ornamental, vegetable, fruits, and aquatic plant species. The host list continues to increase as more detections are made in different parts of the world. Some of the major ornamental plant hosts include azalea, begonia, coleus, coral bell, cron, cyclamen, various species of daisies, elm, geranium, impatient, lysiandus, Mallow, Petunia, Poinsettia, Portulaga, and Verbena. 
Greenhouse grown peppers and tomatoes and basils are also known to be attacked. If you grow any of these plant species, you should keep an eye on your crops. It doesn't mean that you will definitely suffer infestation and damage, but you should stay vigilant to avoid infestation and damage. Do you buy really young plants from propagators located in the infested area in the west coast, along the Gulf Coast and eastern US? If so, you need to keep an eye for infestation on incoming plant materials. It does not mean that the incoming plant material would definitely be infested because most of our propagators are doing a pretty good job in not passing on their pest problem. But you should do your due diligence and quarantine these pests before transplanting them or moving them into your production area. Today, almost all detections, especially those from the northern states, have been reported from greenhouses. There are some reports of detection of adult in nursery, landscape, greenhouse uh, garden center, and inside homes. These adults likely emerge from infested plants from greenhouses. We do not know with certainty if Euro the European pepper moth has established an outdoor population, even in the southern U.S. We will need to be continuing of monitoring our, our pest problem. Well, now that we have established that you do need to worry about the European paper moth, let's talk about how we can prepare you to deal with an infestation. Let's discuss way by which you can detect infestation and damage before they become a production issue. There are several ways you can detect an infestation. The first monitoring method is based on finding the symptoms or sign of infestation visually. As I have often reminded growers, you look at the plants every day, so you know when they don't look right. If they look somewhat sickly, you should pick them up and have a closer look. The European pepper moth can cause death of plants. Of course, when you see a dead plant, it doesn't mean death by European pepper moth. You should do your due diligence and make sure that you find out the cause of death, which could also be root diseases. Often when plants are starting to die, the infestation has been going on for too long. Hopefully, you will not allow it to get to that stage. An earlier sign of infestation by the European pepper moth may be a plant that is slow growing or wilt easily. Again, repeating my point that if a plant doesn't look right, pick it up and have a look. The wilting is caused by the European pepper moth feeding on the plant tissue just above the swirl line. The caterpillar builds a web line chambers in the medium and emerge only to feed on stem or leaves that are touching the medium. Stems can be girdled by the feeding uh, caterpillars. Such wounds can also create entry spots for pathogens, especially they can cause resistant blights. The base of the damaged plants can sometimes be covered with webbing created by the caterpillars. The web is a good diagnostic characteristic. Webbing can also appear on the surface of potting medium. I like to look for this webbing early in the morning because they often glisten with dew. Sometimes webbing can also be spawned by a spider. If you see webbing on web uh, medium surface, you should break up the root ball and examine the medium carefully to make sure you can find the caterpillars. The European pepper moth caterpillar also feed on leaves that are touching or very near the medium surface. You can often find these holes in the middle portion of the leaves. Snail and slugs can also create similar damage, but you can distinguish the two quite easily. Snails and slugs often leave behind telltale slime trail. You can use leaf damage in combination with other symptoms we talked about earlier to confirm the presence of European pepper moth.
Once you find suspicious symptoms or damage, you should confirm your suspicion with detection of the insect itself. A positive diagnosis can only be confirmed if you can find the caterpillars. A fully grown caterpillar is about 1 inch long with brown spots all over its body. They are active in and on the surface of potting medium. It takes about 4 weeks for a caterpillar to develop into a pupa. The pupae are hidden inside chambers made of silk and debris. The caterpillar will make a chamber with silk and potting medium just before pupating. The chambers provide protection to the cocoon. You can look for a cocoon in the potting medium, under the leaves, near the stem, or under the pot. The pupal stage lasts about one week. The European pepper moth adult lay eggs on the underside of the leaves, and sometimes on the side of pots. Fresh eggs are reddish in color, and hatch eggs shell become silvery or translucent. Eggs are deposited in clutches. Each clutch contains 3 to 12 eggs. The eggs hatch in less than one week. Adult European pepper moth is pretty small, about the same size as a penny when fully stretched out. They have wavy white lines on their wings and white bands on the body. The body of the male is usually more elongated and taper than that of a female. Adult comes in different color morph, and when they are resting, they typically hold their wings in a triangular shape. These pictures show a dark form and a light form of the female. Notice that the females often raise their abdomen when resting. This is a calling behavior, which helps in releasing sex pheromone to attract males. Scientists have isolated the sex pheromone and figured out a way to produce this pheromone artificially. Now, you can actually buy sex pheromone lures and use the lure to monitor and trap the moth. The trap is consists of a sticky trap, usually a delta trap, and a lure. Only males are attracted to the lures, so you don't have to worry about attracting females from outside of the greenhouse and start an infestation. You can buy the pheromone traps from Egg Bio and Alpha Sense by following these links or search for the two companies online. It is very important that you monitor the activity of adults and caterpillars through various monitoring methods we have discussed. That's because all management tools, whether they are insecticide, biological control, or cultural control, depends on knowing if the moths are pleasant and when they are present. We will now talk about how to best prevent infestation or manage an infestation of the European paper moth. We will start by quarantine. Remember that the major route of introduction of the European paper moth is through the importation of infested plant materials. In many operations, that means shipping of cuttings and rooted young plants. The incoming plants material should be set aside for at least a week. You should inspect them daily to see if any insect or disease problem occurs. If problem appears, you should treat them before transplanting them or moving them into your production area. If you don't do that, you're basically importing other people's problems and pests. Most propagators and young plant producers are doing a very good job of not passing on their pest problems. But if you have a supplier that keeps giving you pests, you should either drop this supplier or treat all plant material coming from this supplier with suspicions and treat them accordingly. You can stop the European pepper moth from coming into your greenhouse by screening the intake valves. But if you live in an area where there's no established population outdoor, and this would apply to most of the country, then screening may not be that beneficial. Screening will reduce airflow inside the greenhouse and cause additional disease problem. So choose your screen size carefully. Earlier, we talked about pheromone traps. I recommend using the traps as a monitoring tool, 
not so much as the mass trapping tool. The trap will capture, capture only males and may not capture all males. The female can still mate with the small number of males that are not captured by the traps. The female can then continue to lay eggs and cause problems later on. Biological control is a viable and successful man management solution against the European pepper moth. Quite a few biopesticides have been registered for the control of the caterpillars in general. These include the bacterial Bacillus thuringiensis, OPT, with two subspecies, Aizawaii and Kurstaki. BT products are widely available. Venerate and Grandivo are also bacterial products of different species. Puvela basiana and Isaria formosa rosea are two fungal products. There are several products that contain nematodes, which include Steinonyma capsi and Heteroropides bacteriophora. Not every one of these biopesticides have been tested against a European pepper moth. Among those that have been tested here and in Europe, the BT products and nematode appear to be quite effective. These are marked by the yellow check marks. The BT products have been shown to be particularly effective when applied to young plants. They work best against young caterpillars, so you need to monitor for adult population and predict when they will lay eggs, so you can apply the product at the right time. Usually, they apply a branch or drench to the medium every one or two weeks. There are also predators you can buy for European pepper moth management. Two predators so show more efficacy than others, the hypoaspid mites and the Adida roof beetle. These predators are usually used against fungus gnat and thrips pupae and they are active on the medium surface where the caterpillars are also active. They can feed on the eggs and young caterpillars. Studies in Europe have shown that these predators must be released at high rates to be effective. When it comes to deciding which insecticide to use, we need to determine what is our target because products effective against the adult may not be necessarily effective against the caterpillars. Insecticide application that target adults should be applied as a foliar spray when the adults are active. These insecticides are mainly products from the carbamate, organophosphate, and pyrethroid group, which have fast knockdown activity of moth. Based on research and my own observations, foliar spray of orthene, tolstar, and skimidar are very effective against adults. However, treatment against adults may not solve all your problems because the emergence timing of the adult in our area is not certain. So it is best if you time your application based on pheromone trapping. And from what we have seen, adults often have very long emergence and activity time. So you may have to mix weekly or even shorter interval application to keep the moth population down. And lastly, the adult moth can, can rest on any plants or greenhouse structure, requiring you to treat the entire greenhouse. Because it is generally not effective or feasible, I usually do not recommend treatment against adult moths. Therefore, management of the European pepper moth should target the caterpillars. There are a lot of chemicals registered for the management of caterpillars in general. We have not tested all the chemicals against the European pepper moth caterpillars. But for those that we had tested, I put a yellow check mark for one that is effective in trials by myself and Jim Bethke, who is at the University of California. I put a red cross on products that have been shown to be ineffective and a green cross on those I have not tested, but I think will be effective based on my previous experience with similar caterpillar species. Remember that treatment against caterpillars should be applied as branch or drench to the potting medium where the caterpillars are active. Among the carbamate, organophosphates, and pyrethroids, we found that drenching the pots with seven, orthene, and tolstar can be quite effective. 
Safari and likely most of the neonicotinoids are not effective. My experience suggests that spinosad, which is conserved, and spinadoram, which is a component of Aspire, should be quite effective against the caterpillar. The list of insecticides continues. Abamactin, which is Avid and several other products, and Corfenopir, which is Pylon, are very effective against other caterpillar species in my experience, so I expect, expect them to be effective against a European pepper moth. Other products on this list, including Pedestal, Intrepid, and Hachihachi, are registered for caterpillar control, but I do not have data to gauge their efficacy. Some of the more recently introduced insecticides, such as Acelaparin, Mainspring, and Cerisa, have excellent efficacy against caterpillars. In my studies, Acelaparin and Mainspring apply once at 4 fluid ounces per 100 gallons, which is a low label rate, was effective in preventing plant death and foliar damage on coral bill for up to 42 days, and deaths on European pepper moth. A higher rate of the two products at 8 fluid ounce per 100 gallon can push the longevity to at least 49 days. Other products such as Spill Labs, Azadirectin, Overture, Oil, Soap, and Captiva are also registered for controlling caterpillars, but I have not tested them. I expect Overture to have good efficacy against the European pepper moth. So there are clearly some effective insecticides available for the control of the European pepper moth, but which management strategy you use will really depend on the type of operation you are and your pest management goal. Let's say you are a producer of organic vegetables, herbs, and transplants. Here's what I would do if I'm in your shoes. I would start setting by with setting up some pheromone traps in my greenhouses. One trap per house is probably sufficient, but you should follow the recommendation of the lure manufacturer. Since I live in South Carolina, I will start setting up the traps in late March and keep them up until November. I will use a similar timing if I'm in the south, and may start later if I'm in the north. March to November is a long trapping time, because I want to make sure that I can monitor for the moth population over its several generations. If I'm in Southern California, Texas, or Florida, I will trap all year round because there are indications that adults can be active year round. I will start my management program one week after trapping the first moth because eggs take about one week to hatch, and I'm assuming that the first moth can be first moth can be reproductive. In an organic production, I will release lots of hypoaspis mites and Adida beetles. At the same time. I will also spray Bt or nematodes weekly. The combination of predators and biopesticides should do a very good job of keeping the caterpillar population down. If I choose not to use the predators, I can combine my Bt branches with another OMRI listed insecticide such as Entras or Azurectin. Hopefully, after a few branches, I will no longer find my uh, moth in my traps meaning that the population has been taken care of. Then I can stop the treatment. Treatment has to be started again if moths are fine in the traps after disappearing for some time. If I continue to find moths in trap, I will apply the BT product weekly and then trust bike weekly until no more are captured. If I choose to manage um, European pepper moth using biological control, I will need to secure sources of the hypoaspis mites and Adida beetle. If I'm already using hypoaspis mites and Adida beetle for thrips management, I can just increase the release rate to control the European pepper moth. When I'm practicing biological control, I need to be very careful with what kind of insecticide to use. Monitoring and release of predators should continue as previously described. In this case, I will have to anchor my branch program on compa compatible insecticide. Bt and nematodes are compatible with the predators, so I will continue to use them. 
I will only use other compatible insecticide if I have a serious infestation. Pyridarol or Overture is compatible with Adida and Spinosad or Conserve is compatible with Hypoaspis. So these products can be used with the respective compatible predators. We do not know much about the compatibility of all insecticides with predators, but we know that many of the insecticides and miticides are not compatible or only somewhat compatible with the predators. It is best if you check with your biocontrol suppliers on what to use. If I decide not to use the predators at all, I still will need to monitor adult activity just like all the other scenarios. I will start my insecticide treatment one week after detecting the first moth with pheromone traps. There are a lot of insecticide options, but as research has shown, not all insecticides are effective. Regardless of what I do, organic, biological, or conventional, I would definitely include BT products as the cornerstone of my European Pepper Moth Management Program because BT is effective and can be used in all situations. These days, every greenhouse and nursery operation has difficulties in recruiting and retaining workers. Everyone has to do more with less time and labor. If my management goal is to reduce the time and labor I need to spend on making application, I would definitely choose to use as a, a, a celebrant in mainspring. Yes, they are more expensive, but one application at low rate will protect the plants for a month or even six weeks. With other insecticide, which may be cheaper, I would likely have to make reapplication every two to four weeks. The time and labor I save from not having to make frequent applications when I use the celebrant and mainspring can be directed to other tasks and activity. The need to reapply will also depend on whether new moths are captured in the trap after the application. If the moth population peters out, then I can stop. If it continues, I will continue my treatment. I truly believe that we can have a pretty successful management of the European pepper moth population if we can develop sense uh, and execute a good and sensible uh, management program. Thank you for watching this webinar. I hope it is useful in your attempt to manage a European pepper moth. If you need help in developing a pest management program, pest identification, or need more information on the European pepper moth or any other pest, please contact your local cooperative extension service. Alternatively, please feel free to contact me directly through my email. Have a healthy, safe, and wonderful day.